Hey guys, so on this episode of Make It With Calvin, I'm gonna take you through some quick pointers here on how I got the firmware on my X2 updated. And I do have to extend a thank you to Alan over at Happy3D Thailand who reached out to me after I made my video and said, hey, I've got a thing on my website that might actually help you. So let me take you through some of the challenges, if you will, that I ran into while doing this. So first things first, the trickiest part is getting the machine into the correct mode. My printer has the V1.2 Ruby board, which you can't use the M997 to put it into DFU or programming mode. You actually have to bridge the 3.3 volt and the boot pins. And in my case, I actually had some plugs. I just made a quick jumper, not that big of a deal. Now, the trickiest part is getting the printer to show up in the computer the right way. So what I found the trick was is to boot the machine normally, then jumper the cables and reboot the machine. Just using the LCD, just hit the reset button. And what you're looking for in Device Manager is Universal Serial Bus Devices STM32 Bootloader to show up that is the program that we're going to use to actually write the firmware to the machine. So you'll see right now it's theoretically connected in Pronterface and if we go over to STM32 we'll see that it's showing up as USB 1 which is the machine and boom we're connected. You see all this stuff showing up? That means we're good, we're in, it's ready to flash. So now what we can do is we can scroll down here in the directions and he talks about getting the um, various firmwares. In this case, this is, he's showing you how to flash the firmware for removing the Z and stop. In this case, that doesn't matter. So we can go back to STM32. The process stays the same for the boards. In my case, it already knows um, the firmware that I wanna use. And I have the verified programming and download file clicked. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to press the start programming button. You'll notice some stuff happening down here. We've got the scrolling bar, download and process, download verified successfully. So now the firmware on the printer has been updated. We can hit OK, hit OK again, and then we can go over to printer face and type in M500. Oh, printer's not online. OK. So I'm going to undo the jumper. I'm going to reboot the machine. So you hear the computer doing its thing. STM is going to go connection lost. Yes, we know. We, we rebooted it. Um, I'm just going to disconnect and then reconnect. So now we know that we're online. Type in M500. So that's just going to save everything to there. If you don't do that, there's a possibility that it won't remember it which isn't necessarily a bad thing, but you know, we actually want to save it. We don't want to pop the lid open every time we want to, you know, run all metal stuff. Then I'm going to type in M501 to confirm the settings. And that looks good to me. So that's how I went about doing it. Definitely was a bit of a pain in the rear. I'm not going to lie. Hopefully this is going to be one of those I only have or have to do it once kind of things and if I have to go back and do it again, I can do it. But it goes without saying if you're going to do this, make sure you understand what you're doing and if you don't, find somebody who does because this does require you to pop the bottom off your printer. It does require a bit of running around in circles, if you will, with programs to get everything to work. But when I went over to the machine and typed in for 300 degrees C on the um, screen, it worked. And let me actually just try telling it to turn that on. It says it's going to go to 270, so you can watch the graph over here. Let's see if it actually does it. Ladies and gentlemen, we did it. We got the firmware flashed on here, so now we can actually run at high taps. Oh boy, I'm a happy camper. I'm going to stop this here and get the cover back on, but we did it.